How's it going? I'm Andrew with Investors Hub, and today we're going to be talking with Clem Chambers because it's Clem's Day Wednesday. And with Bitcoin dropping to around 28,000 and bouncing off and going to around 34,000 as of me recording this, I figured it'd be a good time for Clem to talk about his uh, Bitcoin trading and investing strategy going forward. And if you don't know who he is, he is the CEO of ADVFN. He's my boss, and he knows a ton about cryptocurrency. He's made a lot of money doing it. And if you don't listen to anybody, <laughs> then you should listen to Clem Chambers. Or if you only listen to one person, focus on Clem Chambers. He's definitely a person worth listening to. And uh, yeah, if you like the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter, iHub underscore vision. And uh, after a quick disclaimer, we'll hear from Clem. Please note that our videos are not designed to be direct investing advice. Our channel and our content should just be one stop on the journey of trying to find out where to put your money. So, Clem, Bitcoin just had a big dive. It bounced off of 28,000. Has your Bitcoin trading strategy that you talked to us about before changed at all? And could you outline that for well, us again? Well, I mean, I don't think I've got a trading strategy. I'm just saying it's going to crash. Oh, I was saying it was going to crash and then it crashed. I said, it's going to keep crashing and it's kept on crashing. <clears throat> and I said, it's going to keep on, keep on crashing. And it's kept on, kept on crashing. And I'm saying now it's going to keep on crashing and it's going to keep on crashing. And, you know, until you get under 20,000, we're not going to be near the bottom. Now, the bottom could be 10,000, 8,000, 13,000, and we're near around that. Yeah, it's going to be really low. And, and Ethereum's going to go under 1,000. It could go, you know, around 1,000. It could go seven, six, five hundred. It's a crash. It's hard to always spot the bottom. So my investment strategy is just let this get out of the way. Now, if you like to trade shorts, if you like to trade crashing markets long, and if I trade at all, I enjoy trading long in markets that crash. That might sound like it's impossible, but you know, when markets go like that, they, they do these bounces. They bounce down the mountain. And you can catch those bounces because they go so far. You go, that's ridiculously far in the last hour. And you buy them, they go, bee, and you get out. And it goes down again. But, you know, it's basically trying to, um, you know, make money by standing in front of a steamroller as it's coming towards you. So, you know, that is, is a high stress, high Gaviscon trading style. High Gaviscon, I hope you get the joke, because you certainly need stomach settlers if, if, you, if you trade like that. But that's trading for you. And you can either go, well, it's any minute now, it's going to go down, it's going to crash, and, and you short it. Or you go, oh, it's gone too far, it's going to bounce. That is trading. And you don't care where the blooming thing's going in the medium or long term. You just care where it's going in the next hour or the next 10 seconds. And that's what traders do. Or, or maybe if you're a little bit more um, sane, you look at it in the next you know, few days or the next day or, or what's going to happen in the, on, over the weekend, et cetera, et cetera. That is trading. Now, I used to do that. I used to make quite a lot, lot of money out of doing that. But I tell you, it's hard to have a sustainable trading style because it's extremely high stress. And after you've made a certain amount of money, you go, oh, I've had enough of this. And that's what normally happens to successful traders. They go, oh, I've had enough of this. In fact, I take some of my trading money and I invest it and I make you know, really good money from that. And I can sleep at night. I don't have to wake up at three in the morning to check the prices. I don't have to... you know worry about the next 10 minutes i can go shopping i can go to the toilet and i tell you if you're trading sometimes you can't you'd have to sit there because it's doing whatever it's doing and you can't be doing whatever you want to be doing yeah and that's trading for you and it's very hard to have a sustainable trading life and i'm a long i'm an actual long i'm good at long i'm very poor at short so i don't short if i was any good at shorting i'd be all over this market short but you know, I've learned from bitter experience. I mean, we, in the last crash, uh, I piled in, and you can read what I wrote in Forbes about to see that I did that. And I piled in, and I thought, I'm going to have two shorts, just because I should have two shorts. I'm going to pick out two of the most rubbishy stocks that are going to get crushed by COVID, and I'm going to short them just a bit. So I shorted these two stocks. They doubled. <laughs> And everything else did as well. So, I mean, no, I, I've had a, a pretty, pretty, really nice run. But the two shorts I did, you know, it's like, how can these companies that one of them is a hotel company that's been closed for a year? How can they double? How can they go back to the high before COVID? I don't get that. Sorry, I don't understand that. 
Um, but anyway, so there's an example of, of you don't have to be good at everything. And if you're not good at something, don't do it. But anyway, that will teach me. Or rather, under underlined, don't short. That's why I'm not short crypto right now. But when it gets to the bottom, and it will get to the bottom somewhere under 20,000, I will then dollar cost average, which means I'll buy a bit, I'll wait, I'll buy a bit, I'll wait, I'll buy a bit, I'll wait, I'll buy a bit. And I'll keep doing it. I'll do that for you know, two or three years. I will be buying Bitcoin and, and some DeFi stuff. And I'll build up a whacking position. It will be just horribly big. By the time the next bubble comes around, I'll be all in. And then what do you know? There'll be a halvening. And what do you know? It will either have gone up early or it won't go up at all. And then when we go, oh, it didn't go up. Oh, oh, and then bang, up it'll go. And, you know, when it goes up, and this time it's going to go to 100 grand. I'll probably be selling out at 65 because I'll be so terrified of, of the profits I've made. I'll run away like a scary bunny rabbit, like I did this time round at 32,000 rather than at 60. And then I'll repeat what I did last time, which is move into DeFi. And then this next time, I'll move into the um, um, smaller cryptos, which I didn't this time. You know, the, the doggy kinds of this world, the, the whatever, Cardano's, the, all, all, the, all the second tier stuff. And probably at the very end, all the rubbish as well just less of it but it's a it's got a bigger alpha bigger ping so you know you you go into bitcoin you make four times your money you go into DeFi, you make 12 times your money you go into these stupid things and you make 20 times your money so you could you can be stupid and put all your profits into each one of them all along the line or you can be smart and you can just say oh well you know i've made five times of money in Bitcoin, I'm going to break off 25% and put it in DeFi. Oh, I've made 12 times of money. Oh, I'm going to break 20% off that and put it in the stupid stuff. Oh, the stupid stuff's gone up. Oh, thank you very much. Goodbye. And that's, that is my strategy going forward. But you play to win by not playing too big, by managing your positions, by managing your risk. And if anybody wants to know how to do that, there's something called the Kelly criteria. Kelly, as in Ned Kelly. Kelly as in Kelly's Heroes, K-E-L-L-Y. And it's the mathematics of how you should size your positions. That's all it is. And it was invented for, for gamblers, uh, but it works just as well for, uh, for trading. And you don't know about the Kelly criteria, do you? No, you don't. Well, you'd need to know about it. I was talking to the, I was talking to the audience, actually. I, we know you know everything. And, um, you know, if you don't know about the Kelly criteria, you really need to read it up. <clears throat> and, you know, there's lots of explanations about it. And most of them are much too complicated for what you really need to know. <clears throat> and that's how you position your size, which is why you don't keep going all in. But anyway, that is my long term strategy. And there's a, you know, there's a be some tweaks because DeFi will probably, you know, go on a run sometime between now and four years time. And uh, NFTs will probably do the same again. And. There'll be a new thing, and it'll be called, I don't know, it'll be called, I don't know what it'll be called. I was going to make a joke, but my brain's not running fast enough to make a, a wisecrack. But, you know, it'll be, it'll be some new area, and they'll all be talking about it in conferences, probably sometime about now. And then in two years' time, there'll be these tokens doing whatever it is. It'll be ERC 59.364s or whatever it is. You've never heard of it before, and they will go on a run. They'll appear out of nowhere, and they'll explode. And they crash. That's the thing to remember. This stuff goes up like a rocket and down like a rock, but it never goes away. So it goes up like a rocket, down like a rock, but not quite as far as it came up. It goes up like a rocket, down like a rock, but not quite so um, far down as it was when it started. And it, it keeps doing that. But just remember, when everybody is bought and everybody wants it to go up and says it's going to go up, everybody has bought. There ain't nobody to buy. And therefore, it's going to go down, isn't it? And all the weak hands, all the people that got in at the top because their next door neighbor made a packet, they're going to pile out crying. And it's going to go down, 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 and down. And everyone's going to weep all the way to the bottom. At the bottom, they're going to say, what a pile of rubbish it all was and how they were scammed and conned and how it's all against God. And it's not their fault. And, and everything else is wrong about the world. And that's when you buy because there's no one else to sell because they all sold. And then it can only go up. It's difficult to do and it's as simple as that and we're in that cycle right now they was going to say oh i read an article today oh it's going to go to 100,000 in the next few weeks well that'll be an amazing bit of levitation what's going to happen is the chinese government going to all of a sudden love bitcoin you know this is on the way down you can look at the chart it's so flaming obvious it's painful 
And if you just forget everything you know, forget everything you think, just look at the chart. You go, well, that's painfully obvious what that's going to do. And it's going to do that. And it's going to go down. And of course, it's going to rally. And of course, it's going to go back a few thousand dollars every time it crashes. Seven thousand dollars is going to go back up for. And everybody's going to say, oh, we're rescued. The, the Lone Rangers come to the rescue. Oh, yes. But no, it's going to go back down again. All you have to do, if you haven't been here before, if you're new, if you're this next generation, remember, the previous generation was wiped out in the dot-com boom. And the people out there now, the young fellows who are new to this game, they've discovered it for the first time. That's the next generation. And every generation has one of these booms, and every generation gets burnt. And it only leaves the miserable old goons like me behind. And they carry on going through the market. And then the next generation who was born, uh, was so young in the last time that the new generation got burned, they're the next generation along. And that's every 20 or so years. And this is that next generation. And they're, if they're in crypto, a large proportion of them are going to get burned. And then they're going to go away and they've come back. But the guys that can ride through this, keep their profits, will make fortunes the next time around. And that's the game. A whole load of people come in. Most of them get mown down. A few people make a lot of money. A lot of people, as a number, but a small proportion, keep their money and then carry on going and, and learning the market and playing the market for the next 25 years. And that's the cycle there too. Markets are, are cycles and we're in the crash cycle of crypto and it's got a few weeks more to run. And when you see it below 20 and you see Ethereum below 1,000, you'll know the bottom isn't that far away. It might be in percentage terms, but not in dollar terms. But there's no rush to get in because there's going to be another three years before the next boom. Average in over that time and you'll be just fine. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, you totally should. It really helps us grow. It doesn't cost you anything, but YouTube really loves those metrics. And uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter. I have underscore vision and I'll see you again soon.